And tonight in Your America, President Obama continues to turn his back on many of the Christian ideals that this country was founded on. Now, we've told you extensively about the company that he likes to keep, you know, like Reverend Jeremiah Wright. We reported on how his staffers chose to cover a cross before a speech that he delivered at Georgetown University. And remember, on the first leg of his worldwide apology tour back in April, when President Obama said this to an audience of captivated reporters. We do not consider ourselves a Christian nation. Well, just before he kicked off round two of his apology tour, he sat down with a reporter from French TV to talk about the goals that he had on this upcoming trip. Now, take a listen and keep in mind that you're going to hear a translator as this aired on French television. One of the points I want to make On voit que les États-Unis sont l'un des plus grands pays musulmans de la planète. All right, so we're not a Christian nation, but we're a Muslim nation. Joining us now with Reaction, Fox News contributor Juan Williams, former prosecutor, Fox News anchor, and analyst Kimberly Guilfoyle. Guys, welcome back. Juan? Good to be with you, Sean. He covered, the, we know what happened to Georgetown. We know that he went out there and he said, we're not a Christian nation, which is blatantly false. There are 1.5 billion Muslims in the world, maybe 3 million in the United States of America. I'm, I'm trying to first figure this out because it's not true. Your thoughts? Well, they're about, what did he say? I think the, the, the census says about three to five, maybe six million Muslims at most. I think what he's trying to say is, look, they're Muslims, and in fact, the, the most educated and most uh, affluent Muslims in the world may live in the United States, and he's trying to say we're a country that has a Muslim and, a, and welcomes Muslims, uh, and Muslims have prospered in our midst. And so it's not as if this is a purely Christian country. Clearly, we're the Christians, you and I, are the dominant people, the dominant faith in this nation, Sean. But we and the Founding Fathers agreed that the government would establish no state religion here. But, but, uh, but we don't I, I, make I'm not any disagreeing. Laws that, that we don't have a church, we don't have like a church of the United States like they have a church of England. Now, and, and that was the specific reason why they did that, Juan. But let me, let me turn to right. Kimberly here. The fact that he denied the Judeo-Christian foundation of which this country and our, our Constitution and our founders and our framers refer to sure. often. Right. We are far more a Judeo-Christian country than we are a Muslim country. You got that right, Sean Handy. And right now, the Founding Fathers, they're doing a, whoa, they're rolling back, flipping over in their graves. Because last time I checked, it was in God we trust, one nation under God, not one nation under Sharia law, Juan. So I'm not quite sure what history books he's reading to make that kind of statement. You're making an explanation, trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. I appreciate that. But he's the President of the United States. And no other president has made that kind of statement before. Well, I think I don't think that we I don't think we Christians have a hold on God. I think God belongs to all. But I think that there are different prophets and different ways of worship. And I think that's what the founding fathers had in mind. You know, well, Juan, let, let me go back to the issue because I, I think we have done more. And this is what really irked me about the apology tour the last the last time. <laughs> yeah, we, we have, I remember. We have done more to beat back totalitarianism. And when he went yeah. to Europe, he ought not to have apologized to Europe. He ought to have reminded Europe of our sacrifice. Look, for example, how many Muslims did we free in Kuwait after the Iraqi invasion. How many Muslims, for example, that were fed, that we fed, that were starving in Somalia? How many Muslims did we protect, uh, you know, in, in Bosnia? How many times when we liberated Kosovo, Kosovo et cetera? Yeah. Yeah. Afghanistan, Iraq, America had shed blood, sacrifice, uh, sweat, the financial burden to save yeah. Muslims. Why doesn't he bring it's that true. message to the Muslim world? Because I think what, you're, what you have to realize is he's going against this perception that we're also people who've invaded the Muslim world. And all of this is true. What but do you I'm mean invaded you. the Muslim world? I think he needs to focus more on the What do you mean invaded the, the Muslim world? Well, clearly we went into Iraq. Uh, and we went into Iraq saying there were weapons of mass destruction, and clearly there are Muslims. And you saw the note today, the message from Osama bin Laden. He's upset at the president's presence in the Muslim world and his outreach. He sees it as a threat to his ability to I, I, recruit this, a lot of these jihadists. Because is, what, Obama, what President Obama is doing is he's saying America 
is a, a place where we don't we don't isolate or we don't bring Kimberly. prosecute or persecute anybody who's Muslim. That's not the America. No, we don't. But we have a right to defend about, our true. country. And I don't think our president needs to engage in this level of political pandering. I think it is reckless. He should not do it. He should clarify his statement. Those were his words and they were inappropriate. Why were they inappropriate? He has no business making a statement like that, that this is a Muslim country. It's not a Muslim country. It's not he a Muslim country. He may be inviting that's a, that's and inaccurate. welcome all different people from different races and different religions. Well, he said it was, we would be one of the largest Muslim countries that's in the world. Right. But, but, but here's, that's right. But I guess here's the either. point, too. I'm getting very concerned about his treatment of Israel. Because on this trip, I don't see that he's stopping at Israel. He's lecturing Netanyahu that he's got to give up settlements. He, on the, on the eve of this tour, tells Iran that it's okay to go nuclear while he's telling America that we need solar power and wind power and we're not building nuclear power plants here in the United States. That's that's a little frightening. Is he that naive to think Ahmadinejad wouldn't use it as he denied the Holocaust again today to no, annihilate but, Israel as promised? But I tell you the way I understood it, Sean, was that he was saying that if this was really about building power plants, that he has no objection. Nobody in the world would have objection if it was about the electrical grid. But he doesn't want to build them here. Grid, it, yeah. No, I'm saying that if it was about the electrical grid in Iran, no one has any problems. But we know, and I think it's, it's more than you and me sitting here talking, I think American intelligence and world intelligence thinks that what we see here is people who are using that as a cover to develop nuclear weapons. And that is not acceptable. Yeah. All right, Kimberly, we'll give you the last word. Yeah, today. I just think that he needs to really watch what he's saying. These are really frightening comments that he's making these kind of statements. I do not think that it's helping us in terms of the worldview. I think it's dangerous. It's reckless. And he needs to watch. What